So this past week when I was recording that Hot or Not podcast with my good friend Jim from Weird Science, available exclusively on Patreon, we ended up getting into a little side adventure of Jim talking about all of his experiences interviewing comic book pros, how they all went terribly wrong, or at least most of them did, and how basically most of the comic book pros ended up hating him in the process, and I thought it was hilarious. I did reach out to Jim and say, hey, do you mind if I put this on the YouTube because it's too good to hide away from people? And he agreed to it, and uh, it, it's really funny. I'll give you a little bit of context. We were talking about the Batman first night number two from Dan Jurgens, and I was talking about the book, and I ended up talking a little bit about my interview with Art T-Bear, who had inked Dan Jurgens on Death is Superbad. And he went in there and he started talking about how Dan Jurgens doesn't like him. And somehow that ended up becoming how a bunch of people <laughs> didn't like him because Jim's interview stylings are, I guess, are a little bit unique or maybe the word is odd. <laughs> and these stories are very, very funny. They're very, very brief. But I do want to hear from you guys. Which one do you think was the best story from Jim about somebody in the comic book industry who ended up hating him? My favorite one is number eight. I definitely want to hear from you guys in the comment section. Jim, do not look at the comment section because you know you're just going to argue with people and make more people not like you. But uh, this stuff was solid gold. I hope you do enjoy it. And I had a great time editing this and putting it together. And thank you so much, Jim, for allowing me to put this up there because uh, it was absolutely hilarious. Dan Jurgens, uh, he didn't. He got mad at me at one point. <laughs> you got Dan Jurgens. Yeah, mad at yeah. You? and he he actually. Um, he like made a like at one point I used to actually talk to a lot of people like because I, and I was a young whippersnapper back there as they say to go with the genre of the Batman the first night but uh yeah I, I ended up talking to him and it was around the time of I think it was yeah what was it Future's End and there was a deal and somehow I I, I was an idiot we just started doing our site and things like that and I did happen to ask him why like oh how did you get put on the <laughs> on the what booster gold book and he he was offended <laughs> he did not like that i didn't know everything he about him yeah, and and that's all yeah and i i kind of like I'm well you did you, disrespect him jim that is disrespect i believe it was like two months after we started the deal so i you know i had been reading some stuff but i had you know gotten into comics late and i just oh it was just a stupid thing with these interviews and uh yeah he didn't like that he, he didn't respond. You didn't to me read for a up while. on the Wikipedia before you did the interview. No, I ended up because these. See, this is also the thing: is these interviews that I tried to do back in the day. Uh, it was called Five Questions with, and then dot dot dot. And but it, they were goofy. Like I would ask like two of them, and also I'd ask like ten questions, and uh, they'd get mad. But uh, not a lot of comic stuff. It was like pop culture and goofy stuff. He did not like that. He didn't like the tone of it. Like I asked him how many. No, no, he wanted to come he on and eat. promote his books. Yeah, and that's that's the first two or that, and then I'm like, you know, stuff. What do you? What put, about this booster gold? What's your character? favorite? What's I don't your even favorite associate syrup? him with that. Was even like before that. The thing, yeah, and he, he didn't like that, so it ended there. And then he didn't talk to me if he didn't answer how many chicken wings he could eat in one sitting. Uh, <laughs> you know, oh, uh, uh, is it uh, Justin Gray? Is that who works with Jimmy Palmiotti? Is that the, the one, the side writer? I think it is. He uh, he ended up at one point where again, the same thing, and he had fun with it. And he said that he was the wing eating champ. At DC Comics, so I just made that a deal. Like, how many chicken wings can you eat? And you can beat Justin Gray. Nobody liked it. People, I ended up having to stop it because every but Jimmy Palmiotti told me I was nonsense. <laughs> I thought it was fun. Uh, was you yeah. nonsense to your face? Yeah, yeah. He because I had like some question about the Breakfast Club or something, and he's like, "That's not his thing. He's more in the '70s stuff." I'm like, "This fucking nobody wants to have fun." So I bailed. I bailed on it. Never did an interview again. That's why people because ask. You ask some stupid questions. You've got stupid yeah, answers. Yeah, because that, again, I mean, I'm not saying anything about your your interview, but most of the times when you see the standard interview, they're going to ask the same nonsense, and it's not fun. I well, thought I tried. Was, I went out of my way not to do that with Mr. Well, T Bear again, and I I thought that this would be something because in my mind, and this is like 2015, so I'm thinking a lot of people. What's don't your know favorite these Spice people. Girl, Mr. Palmiotti? Oh, I'm telling you, if they were like that, what or the like, fuck what, are you talking what's about, your favorite Jimmy? breakfast cereal? I thought that. To, they'd open up and this would allow people to actually like the people, not just the idea of, oh, they have a book coming out. I, I, really, big, what you did was big you allowed hopes them and to dreams. hate you. 
Okay, how about this other one? They did. <laughs> they all hated me. And then the other one that didn't work out was I had the idea that because people were streaming games and stuff like that, right? I thought, well, what would be fun is to have a comic book interview with, say, maybe a Scott Snyder. But while we're interviewing, we're playing the game and we're playing like a Call of Duty, I think it was, or whatever. So we're having fun with that and whatever. That lasted three seconds. He said it was bullshit and hung up. <laughs> I'm like, all right, this isn't working either. So I tried. Did he I even tried. log on? No, yeah, oh, yeah, he was on. Uh, I explained what it was, and he seemed in. I mean, he had the game, and then he just, I guess he didn't like the way it was he going. He had an epiphany. Yeah, he had Am a, I really going to waste my life? This is bullshit. This. Like, <laughs> like, I'm just, I thought it'd be funny. And then maybe, it, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was, but he didn't well, like that. Also, Scott Snyder takes comic books pretty seriously. Also, Scott, one of the things that Scott Snyder, because I would talk to him a lot. He, he's one of those guys that he talks to a lot of people, but he'll like feed you stuff that he wants you to know that he thinks you're going to let out there. But you know, he has a weird way of doing it. He's like behind the scenes type deal. And uh, he was going to come on the show and he uh, I said, can we make the thing where you just come on? Because Eric, uh, the guy on the DC comic show, he had given one of his latest issues of Batman because it was back in the new 52, a really low score. So I said, it'd be funny that all of a sudden we're like, oh, my God, there's somebody on the line. And it's Scott Snyder showing up to yell at Eric like, oh, my God, like that was the joke. He wouldn't do it. He said that that would make him look bad. And he's yes. not and like fuck it fuck this i said from that point on i'm done i don't need to all talk these, to these fucking assholes. comic book divas these fucking assholes these and then guys one <laughs> one more time though then you have uh what's his name kyle higgins he get i didn't get all, i'm done with this shit you think kyle higgins man you I don't know. He, guy he, this is here's what happens kyle higgins gets a hold of me he sends me a dm and says hey i have and remember that um New Order, Nightwing. Yes, or, Nightwing, New World Order. He said, hey, he listened to the it's a good first, book. I loved it. We, he listened to the first issue that we reviewed, and he got a hold of me and said, hey, I really like that review. Is there any way I could come on with you and go through the next issue? Like, just come on. And when we go and ask questions, like he said, just do your review, but I'll be there and I'll talk and why I did this and that. I thought, that sounds awesome. That sounds really cool. And he's one of my favorite Direct writers. Cut. Yeah. So I said, yeah, we could do that. And I thought, if you're going to do that, we'll probably put that out as its own thing. Like, it'll be an old side podcast deal on the feed. And he's like, oh, that'd be great. And I said, okay. And then he's like, is there anything else I should listen to? Before we do this, and I said, oh, no, like, you know, if you want to listen to the whatever random episode, we kind of do the same thing. I guess he's listened that night. And he blocked us. Like he went from asking me to come on to blocking us. It was I don't know whatever happened. Never found out. <laughs> And I'm like, God damn it. Like, what is I know going exactly on? what happened. Oh, he, he probably Jimmy heard. Uh, audio interview. He probably, no, he probably like, listened. Because I mean, the Dan Jurgens interview. Back in like, those wow. days, this, when that book if this was is what he did out, to the guy that no, created, did Death that'd be Superman great. And no, he created I, Booster Gold. I don't know what he's going to do. At to me. that point, uh, we we would like yell and scream a lot and like give really, I think he just heard me probably bashing somebody and that he liked. I, I don't know. He just, I went from then. I only realized because then it was like two days later, he didn't get back to me and we were going to record like that night. And I went to message him. I'm like, oh shit, I'm blocked. I'm like, that's fucked up. And I don't know. Yeah, still blocked. I think I, I did something bad. One of my favorite writers. I'm not too. even blocked by Kyle Higgins. Yeah, because yeah, he's a nice guy. Yeah, like he's the best. I like that guy. I liked him. Uh, I wouldn't listen to a lot of that fat man on Batman, speaking of Kevin Smith, but the episode where he interviewed Kyle Higgins, I thought was awesome. Kyle Higgins was giving me some info and in that, like how he writes and writes different digitally. And it was really, really cool. And now I'm blocked. I, something he heard, something happened. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So back to these books. Now I'm depressed. I'm depressed with all this nonsense. But uh, well, I'm thinking that uh, you're going to destroy my reputation here, Jim. Yeah, that's the crazy thing. I'm going to be the one to bring you down. Yeah, these people don't care. They, actually, it's funny because I think that, you know, everybody hates everybody. So what do you get? But they hate different. Like people think I'm a goofball. They get this. But everybody has the wrong opinion. I, I'm I'm an Einstein, I think. Now they, I don't. You're a man ahead of your time. I thought those would have been in funny three interviews. years. There's gonna be Scott Snyder playing video games. Yeah, and I'll be a gamer. I, yeah, I, fucking, yeah. Uh, Chuck now, I, Dixon playing 
a golden eye with fucking EBS on a stream. Oh, and they're like, it. why didn't anyone yeah. think of this before? I was thinking of certain people who would steal ideas because they seem to steal everything they do. But I, we won't go into that. But the idea, yeah, I'll be pissed. I was way ahead of my time. I thought it'd be really cool. I, I, I always thought that it would just open up the idea of, oh, these are actually people that you could follow. I'd rather follow somebody that's a... Uh, so, Jim, when did you realize after your succession of interviews that went down in flames that maybe that wasn't the best approach? I, I still haven't realized. I still, <laughs> think, I still think that it was good. I, I had also a there was another one. That, this You're went making on, my inner like middle child uh, come out here. Jim. This went on for a while. And every time I did it, like I thought they were hilarious. And every time that I did it, there'd be so many bad comments because there would be times where somebody was coming out with a new book or actually I had a couple of them that they actually like told like breaking exclusives. news info yeah. exclusives. But in the meantime, then th this one, I remember t this day, the one person and I forget it was the girl. It was a lady who did that um, weird, almost like strange academy type book and I, I wish i could remember at this moment but it was at dc it was like a magic academy type deal and it wasn't going to come out then it was and all these things going on but she broke Gotham news academy? on it no it was, it was a different one i I'll, I'll i'd have to look it up it was a weird book and uh it's something that kind of it got delayed then it got canceled then it got brought back later it was really a, a disaster but at the point it seemed pretty cool and the one comment was Damn it, this guy actually got breaking news info, and then the next thing he does is ask her how many chicken wings she could eat. <laughs> this guy sucks. And I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> like, that was when I think I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> I even I had plans of like this would be so big that then at points we could have a chicken wing eating contest at Comic Con. I'm telling you, I get wacky ideas. It'd be cool. Justin Gray would be there with the belt. <laughs> It'd be awesome. He was into it. There was a couple. Uh, uh, Bruno Redondo was real fun with it. He had fun with it. And uh, I think Tom Taylor actually did one that was pretty fun, too. Like, some people seem to have some fun. Not everybody, though. A lot of other people got pissed and didn't like it. I think it. I think we should do it right now. It's yeah. ahead of my time. Me and you, streaming games, talking to whoever. Whoever. <laughs> it's so stupid. You and I streaming games, talking shit about comic books is probably fine. In fact, I think yeah. people would watch it on That'd be Twitch pretty funny. Potentially yeah, even but on don't YouTube. You think it'd, be it'd be funny. Like, we'd have Lansing and Kelly on, and we'd just destroy them. It'd be fun. Or just, like, Fight Club. That'd be cool, too. You could do that. Fight Club comic style. But, uh, Jesus, Jim. Uh, this, you really these, needed a producer name. No, class. these were times back in the day. These yeah, these are times uh, back in the day where I was throwing everything. Like we, I, what Eric, the guy, he said it was called Godzilling everything. Like I would get an idea, and then I'd get twenty ideas, and it was just there was no purpose, there was no focus. It was just me doing wacky shit. That's why I said you needed a producer named Wes. Yeah, yeah, that that's what I uh, needed. It was back in filtered out your shitty ideas. Two thousand fifteen. Like, we're I like, said, well, how about now. we just do this? Interview yeah. Scott Snyder. Interview him about the stuff. I'm like, yeah. I, I perhaps that's the way to go. I thought it was uh, and maybe on the outro you can ask him if he likes chicken wings. <laughs> I, I was cracking the code, is what I was doing. <laughs> and I, it didn't get cracked nothing but my my great reputation. Now uh, that was a fun like, side adventure we just had there, Jim. Yeah, people uh, again, nonsense. Uh, you're the yeah. only person I've ever met that has a bad story about Dan Jurgens. And yeah. I don't think it was Dan's fault. No, it, it was my fault. It was. And uh, Eric will, okay, like about every eight months, he'll, re well, he, he'll remind me anything Dan Jurgens comes up, he'll say. Would, would you ask Dan Jurgens? Isn't that Jergens the guy that again? hates you? Yeah, well, would you ask him to like, you know, piss him off? I'm like, you shut your mouth. He thought it was hilarious because I didn't even, because he would. It is hilarious because his friend made an I, ass of himself. And that's I great. didn't, yeah, that's the thing. I didn't even run it by him, who's a lifelong comic reader. I just thought I was just, that was just an opening question. That was to get the break. For the, the first year of my channel, I had a couple of people that I would reach out to them and like, hey, I want to talk about this in this context. Does that even make sense? Yeah. Like, yeah. No, you're you're missing something completely. You need to read up on this too before you talk about that. Okay. I'm like, yeah. oh, thank you for not letting me. Well, thank you for not embarrassing, it. you know, letting me be embarrassed. I, I didn't yes. have that. I was working without him. Well, net. you did have that. You had Eric. <laughs> well, I did, but he like you just didn't utilize your resources, Chris. It's a little lazy. Resource we'll management say. is a key that to military victory. I, and obviously, I had my 20 years of military experience before I, I started. Yeah, 
Well, here's I was stuck in a rut because when when I would do these, whatever they're doing that at that point, I would say that would always be like, oh, so tell me how you got the opportunity to write this book. That's really what it was. And he just was probably like, what the f- I'm the Dean rest? fucking Jurgen. Yeah, I that's love the why death I, of Superman. My I'm well above booster gold. Yeah, yeah, he's like, I got I'm the like, opportunity because my name is Dan. Yeah. Followed by Jurgens. Yeah, yeah. And I really like him. Yeah, he he still he actually still follows me. I've asked him a couple questions over uh, the years and uh he doesn't respond, but he doesn't block me. <laughs> he seems nice enough. I've had people tell me that like they've gone to a show and said, "Hey, I, you know, weird science whatever." And he'll, "Oh, those guys are cool." So he's a nice guy. <laughs> he's probably like he's those so it. it's like uh, those pricks. Yeah, yeah. I do have a comic legitimately signed by Tom King that says, "Hey Jim, go fuck yourself, Tom King." That's pretty cool. Guy told I would him love to have that. It. In my, in my it's pretty cool. I have it downstairs. It's like on my bookshelf. So that's that's pretty cool deal. Uh, also, uh, Brian uh, uh, Bucciolato. Uh, there's one that tells me. I don't know why because I never really said anything really bad about him. But back to the comics. <laughs> that was a side adventure uh, of sorts there. Uh, but this this Batman first night, I think, is pretty good. So there you go. Those are the people that Jim ended up alienating with all of his interviews back in the 2015 era of the Weird Science comic book podcast. He's got lots of podcasts. If you haven't checked out Weird Science, they do a lot of comic book reviews, a really awesome resource if you like written reviews, but they also do a lot of podcasts with the reviews on there. And obviously, Jim also does the YouTube. The guy is basically a triple threat. Uh, He's one of my best friends now at this point. I don't know how Jim and I ended up being uh, such good friends, but uh, he and I are just like two peas in a pod. And I love just screwing with the guy. If you haven't checked out the Hot or Not podcast on Thinking Critical Patreon, uh, that's the kind of nonsense that you can expect uh, when Jim and I start getting into it. And we do have this awesome segment at the end called The Dad Corner. His kids are like, I think, 17 to 30, and my kids are 8 to 2. And we talk about what it's like being a dad, obviously, in 2024. He's got the funnier stories. There's no doubt about that. Mine are about watching cartoons and maybe getting farted in my face. Uh, Jim has way worse stuff than that happened to him, but uh, you should definitely check that one out. There's a link in the video description to the Patreon, and I do hope you enjoyed this one because I had a great time putting it together. (laughs) 